keeping moving with nutritional issues, we need to look into more about dieting for weight loss. Is it beneficial? How do you do it? Or what's the whole mentality behind it? This is a huge industry because everyone's always worried about counting calories in, counting calories out, but it's not really that simple. The industry itself is currently sitting about a $75 billion industry every year. So we're talking about a huge amount of money. And what this is doing is promoting a diet culture where individuals feel the need to be on a diet to be losing weight, to constantly keep losing weight. But do you need to be doing that? Is that the right mentality? Because really most diets for weight loss, you just can't sustain them. They're not something you can do long-term. And long-term isn't a month. Long-term could be years. Because quite often, when someone has, for example, obesity treatments, in the long run, go, we're talking years on the line, they actually cause an increase in weight. They're not going to maintain that lower weight. And this is a lot of times looking at the diets just aren't there. They've done meta-analysis and clinical trials, just looking at these long terms, and they're just not sustaining it, unfortunately. The entire cycle, this whole idea of let's lose weight. All right, we finished our diets and the weight goes up. Let's lose weight. Finished our diet and the weight goes up. This whole cycle just isn't really healthy in the body. Now, sure, some do succeed. They go through diets, lose weight, and they keep it off. But that's usually because of a lifestyle change, not just a change in what you eat. People that a lot of times are successful will change what they eat, but not think of it as a diet. Think of it as this is my lifestyle. This is what I want to be. Increasing activity as well. Kind of pairing those hand in hand. Because if you go back to the previous way you used to eat, the way you didn't feel well because you had too much fat, too much weight, that's going to usually change that and then go back to that weight again, unfortunately. So this diet cycle itself needs to be broken. And the trick is, how do you break it? Because while you might get some short-term weight loss, you go on the diet, losing weight, feeling good, great, that's awesome. But then if you stop that diet, the research has shown that once someone stops dieting, usually within three years, they'll gain that weight back, if not more. And they're saying about 95% of people will have this occur if they stop their dieting and go back to the previous habits before dieting. That's the big catch. If you stop the diet and go back to what you're doing before dieting, if you've changed your lifestyle and just maintain it, you're not having to go back to anything. So this whole weight cycling is very stressful on the body. It puts strain in the body. It can actually lower your metabolism. If you lower your metabolism, that means it's easier to put more weight on. It can help reduce muscle mass. It can even increase the risk of eating disorders. So this back and forth, this cycling, isn't really very healthy for the body. But it also will put a negative strain on your mental state. Because you're constantly saying, you know, this didn't work, let's try this. Oh, this didn't work, now let's try that. Oh, this works a little bit and then didn't work. And it's just a lot of people get very caught up and very nerve-wracked about how to lose weight. And all that stress mentally actually makes things even worse for trying to lose weight. So what the problem is, a lot of times they're saying these days, is that the number is the focus. While the number shouldn't be the focus. Someone's actual weight isn't necessarily an indicator of how healthy or unhealthy they are. It's more of an outdated thought process there. Because the weight is only one part of the equation. The weight is part that goes into, do you feel healthy? How's your body functioning? Do you have energy? Because somebody that could be the same exact height, same exact age, same exact gender, but one person that weight might be very healthy, while the other person that weight might not be. 
One person has more muscle mass, one person has more fat mass. So really the number by itself can't tell the whole picture. That's why BMI isn't really a great way of trying to say, hey, you're in the obese category, BMI, or you're in the overweight category. Well, there are many individuals that are classified as overweight for BMI, and they're in peak physical health. They just have a lot of muscle mass on their bodies. And that muscle mass increases weight, which pushes them into the overweight category. And if you look at professional athletes, how physically fit they are, but if you look at their weights in comparison to BMI, they're all overweight usually because they have so much muscle mass for those particular four sports that need muscle mass. So really, what we gotta do is kinda look at the whole picture. There are many different risk factors that aren't even associated with weight. Regular movements, regular activity. Are you sitting around all day? Just sitting on the couch or sitting in a chair or a desk? If you're not up and moving around, at least somewhat, before work, after work, getting some movement in, that's not the most healthy for your cardiovascular health. So you might have a desk job, no worries, but maybe for work or after work. Go work out at the gym, go take a walk, do a bike ride, climb some flights of stairs, even park your car further away from where you work. Just something to get some extra steps and some extra movement in, try to help out your physicality. There are different biomarkers to look at. Blood pressure, blood glucose, total cholesterol, if you go in for an annual physical, a lot of times your doctor might be looking at these things and monitoring, are there changes? Are they starting to increase blood glucose levels? Uh, is your cholesterol creeping up? These are things that are based on what you eat, but also partially based on genetics. You just can't change. Stress, inflammation are two more. Now, it's impossible to have zero stress. Your body, for that matter, actually needs some stress. But managing the stress is the trick. I wish there was one simple answer. Here's how you manage stress. But unfortunately, there isn't. Everyone needs to figure out how they manage stress. How do you keep your stress levels in a reasonable rate? How do you lower them if they get too high? What do you do if you get stressed out? Can you remove yourself from the situation? Can you take a walk, read a book, sing a song, play some music? What works for you to reduce and calm your stress levels. Maybe it's just meditation. Inflammation. Now, some individuals will have inflammation based on the foods they eat. Trying to figure out what foods those are so you don't have that is quite beneficial. Hormone balance. Well, if your hormones are all in balance, that's great. But if they're out of balance due to dietary intake, just due to things in life, due to age, that can also impact your health. Mental state. We could talk about this one for hours, but the idea is if you're in a good mental state, you have enough energy, you have enough nutrients to the brain that can really help with your overall health. Sleep. Some people only need four hours of sleep. Some people need seven or eight. Some people need 10 hours. Everyone has their own kind of set amount of how much sleep they need. Adequate amounts of sleep help with adequate amounts of energy and freshness mentality. Quality of life. Are things working out? Are there problems? So try to make sure you have a quality of life that matches what you want to feel in your body. Connections to community. Now, sure, some individuals say, hey, I know I'm a loner. Go for it, no worries. But other individuals need that connection, need that ability to talk, to interact with other people around the community. Figuring out what you need and making sure you meet those needs are the important parts. Do you need the solitude, being a loner? Do you need the connection to community because you're having the interpersonal relationships? Intellectual health, occupational health. So what the heck are those? Intellectual health is, are you stimulating your brain enough to basically keep things moving, keep things interesting? Or are you kind of more bored and just not getting anything really stimulating? keep your body and mind moving. Occupational health. If you have a very physically demanding job, are you physically fit to meet that? Or occupational health also is, are you doing something you like, something you enjoy? 
something that you want to be there. Because if you dread going to work, that kind of then goes into mental state, goes into quality of life and starts cascading. The idea is there is a huge amount of factors that play a part in your overall health. It's not just nutrition. Nutrition plays a large part, but all these other things also influence. So really, health can be based on many different sizes, many different shapes. Looking at how you feel and how your body works is a key thing. Now, with that being said, though, obesity can get to the point where, hey, you might think you're feeling well, but that increased obesity rate will have a huge amount of impacts on blood pressure, heart health, lung health, and a lot of other factors in your body. So yes, you might be feeling okay, but the impacts down the line might be problematic because a lot of obesity problems occur years later. So yeah, watch out for the obesity versus a healthy weight, just being on the heavier side because of muscle mass or something like that. Biggest thing is though, as you're looking at your diets, think about intuitive eating. Listen to your body. If your body feels great after eating a certain amount of things, keep at that. But if you eat some things, your body feels sluggish. It's not just feeling great. You feel bloated, your stomach's off. Those are things not to eat. Basically follow the cues. Listen to what your body does after you eat things and then tell your diet to those individual things. Doesn't mean you can't have any sweets or anything like that, but moderation. The whole idea is get away from the unhealthy idea that you need to control weight based on diet alone. It's exercise, it's mentality. There's a lot of factors that go into it. It's not looking at lose weight, go back to the way you were, gain the weight. Lose weight, go back to the way you were. We're not looking at that cycle. The idea is to change your lifestyle to break that cycle. To have a diet, have food intake that doesn't feel like you're dieting, but just maintain the best version of you, maintaining your health, feeling good about yourself. That's the goal. Balancing nutrition with all these other factors in your life can help you reach that goal. It's a learning process. You're constantly adjusting it. Just keep at it is the key. Until the next video.